Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we'll talk about the process of glycolysis, the first step of the ciliary respiration. But before talking about the glycolysis, we have to know that the ciliary respiration has two types. There is aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. The Aerobic respiration depends on the presence of oxygen. So, it occurs when oxygen is abundant. While the anaerobic respiration occurs when oxygen is not abundant. When oxygen is not found, anaerobic respiration takes place. Both of them begin with the glycolysis process. The aerobic respiration includes glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain and it produces a large amount of energy which is 38 ATP molecules. While the aerobic respiration produces a very little amount of energy by comparison which is 2 ATP only and so the aerobic respiration gains uh, succession over the anaerobic respiration in this video and the next two videos we are going to talk about the aerobic respiration then we will talk about the anaerobic respiration So about the glycolysis, we have to remember the structure of the glucose molecule, which is C6H12O6. This molecule will be oxidized into 2C3H. 4 O3 plus 2 ATP. So an amount of energy which equals 2 ATP will be released and the glucose molecule will be oxidized into 2 pyruvic acid molecules. If we calculate the number of uh, molecules or atoms here, 2 by 3, we got 6 carbon atoms. H is 8, 2 by 4, and 2 by 3 is 06. So the original was C6H12O6. We can know that or not that. The only number that change here is 12 to 8. We can conclude from that that the, um, there are 4 hydrogen atoms which are lost from the glucose molecule during this oxidation. We will now have these molecules are lost or where do they, where did they go? So glycolysis begins with a glucose molecule which has six carbon atoms. Glucose then changes into glucose six phosphate, which also has six carbon atoms. During this transformation, an ATP molecule changes into ADP. So, an ATP molecule loses a phosphate group and changes into ADP. Then, glucose 6-phosphate changes into fructose 6-phosphate. which is still contain six carbon atoms. 
So we can notice that in the first and the second there's glucose in common. In the second and the third there is six phosphate in common. Then fructose changes into fructose one six phosphate. with 6 carbon atoms here we have fructose in common then this uh, fourth substance here changes into two molecules of phosphor Glycerol aldehyde phosphoglyceraldehyde phosphoglyceraldehyde abbreviated into PDAL. So this was one molecule, then it transformed into two molecules. The first has 6C, so we divide 6 by 2 to get 3 carbon. three carbon um, atoms during the change of fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 1 6 phosphate we have also an ATP changed into ADP so this 2 PDAL Each has three carbon atoms, changes into two pyruvic acid molecules and each with three carbon atoms. In this transformation, we have four. ADP molecules oxidized into four ATP and we have four NAD plus that of course carried four hydrogen atoms and transformed into four NADH. Then this two per these two pyruvic acid molecules have two conditions either to go under anaerobic respiration which we will dis discuss later or aerobic respiration so they undergo the Krebs cycle the next step here we have four ADP molecules changed into four ATP. Well, in the previous, previously we not we not that there were ATP molecules, two ATP molecules oxidized into two ADP. So by subtracting this from this, we gain finally that the total produced molecules of ATP is two ATP, just like we said in the beginning. And with four NAD plus molecules changed into or reduced into four NADH from the original content of the glucose, which contained twelve hydrogen negative four, to yield finally eight, which is the uh, the same pyruvic acid structure. So. The chemical equation which illustrates the process of glycolysis is C6 
H12O6, which is a glucose molecule, undergoes glycolysis in the in the aerobic conditions or in the in the presence of respiratory enzymes. It gives 2C3H4O3 with two ATP molecules produced. And this is it for today. The next time we will talk about the Krebs cycle. And until then, thank you for watching.